Okay, wonderful. We're going to go ahead and get started. So I want to thank everyone for joining us for this evening's Southwestern Spotlight. We are going to feature Nicole Rossi Stanley, who is a Scale 2 student. And in case you don't know what that means, it means she's actually graduating the end of this year. Um, so it goes by in a whirlwind. Um, I see some familiar faces and names. So, so glad to have you back to join us and welcome to anyone that's new. Um, for those that are also considering scale versus the evening program, following this program at a different Zoom link, which you should have all received, there is the evening program uh, panel at six o'clock. So we'll be done in plenty of time for you to hop over to that. This will be over at 545. So we'll keep it short, we'll keep it sweet. Um, please note any questions that you have. You can ask them in the chat and I will ask them to Nicole or if you want to be brave, you can always raise your hand and ask them to her directly when we get to the Q&A section. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Nicole. Hi everyone. Uh, nice to meet all of you. As Dean Gear mentioned, my name is Nicole Rossi Stanley, and I'm a Scale 2 student. So that means I'm in the second year of the two-year scale program. I am a bit of an older student because I decided to go to law school after I was 10 years out of undergrad, and this will actually be my third career. So first, I was a production stage manager for technical theater and live events. I worked kind of all over LA, uh, Disneyland red carpet events, Universal, Universal Studios Hollywood theme park stunt shows, as well as a lot of different 99 seat theaters, uh, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion and Opera House all over the place. And then I worked for a small metal finishing company for the aerospace industry, where I started at the bottom and worked my way up to operations manager, which is where I started working with some of the, the company attorneys. Uh, Aerospace deals with hazardous materials, so we had an environmental attorney in addition to the corporate attorney, the tax law attorney, and that was where I became very interested in the law and decided I wanted to go back to school. I am married four years, no kids, and I knew that I wanted to stay local. I'm a Southern California native, and I didn't want to go anywhere else because I knew I wanted to stay in LA. So I started looking at the schools around here. And once I found out about the scale program, I knew that that was my first choice and exactly where I wanted to be because I'm, I'm still ready to jump right back into a career, get it done in two years and move forward. And once I found out about all the wonderful opportunities that Southwestern has available, I kind of fell in love with the campus and the people. It really feels like family. I'm a first generation law student. So I didn't have anyone in my family that I could ask about any of this. Um, didn't have any friends that had gone through it. So I was kind of researching on my own and figuring out where I wanted to be and everything led me to Southwestern. So that's just a little bit in a nutshell of what got me here. Uh, since I've been here, I love to be very involved. So I like to do a lot of volunteer work. I work with the public service program and actually put together some of my fellow classmates. We started volunteering at LAFLA's expungement clinic. And right now I'm leading a project uh, that we're working on with them. I'm also on the board for Teen Court as the special events coordinator, which is a wonderful program I can talk about later if you're interested. I love, I love Teen Court very much. Um, I've also been a teaching assistant for torts, legal profession, and evidence. And I belong to two of the honors programs here at Southwestern. I'm the chair of the board for the Trial Advocacy Honors Program, which we abbreviate as TAP. So if you hear anyone talking about TAP, that's all it stands for, Trial Ad. I'm actually the first scale chair, and I'm also on law review as a staffer this year. Uh, let's see what else. I belong to the Southwestern Inns of Court chapter, which is a wonderful networking group of lawyers and judges who mentor students and want to promote civility within the profession. And even though I started not really knowing what type of law I wanted to practice, I was thinking about family law and maritime law. Once I became involved with trial advocacy, that was when I knew that's what I wanted to do. And that is the type of career that I am currently pursuing. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Nicole. Do we have any opening questions for Nicole? Nicole has a great curriculum. Hi, Michael. Uh, Hi, Michael. Thank you to have us on board. Uh, We're looking forward. Did you have any questions, Michael? No, no, everything is good. Okay. <laughs> um, you're here. Okay. So, Nicole, um, did you originally know um, about scale or how did you come to learn about it? Um, and then what what was persuasive to you about joining the SCALE program? I know at this point you are through and through a SCALE student, but um, there must have been a decision point there for you. So when I was looking at schools, I was looking at LA and Orange County and visited all seven schools. I'm sorry that you're not in that position right now, but you're doing the right thing by attending all of the digital events that you can. And so I wanted to get a feel for everything because I had heard the name Southwestern, but I didn't really know too much about it. And they had an early event, I believe it was in August that I went to and I got to see the gorgeous Bullock's Wilshire building in all of its art deco glory. And when I first walked in, uh, Julie Soper, who's now Julie Spencer, she walked right up to me and welcomed me and my family and started talking about the four different programs that I didn't realize Southwestern had. And once she started talking about scale, I knew I had to do research into that program. So I actually did quite a lot of research around the country because I thought that law school could only be done in three years. I'd never heard of a two-year program before, especially being first generation. And what I discovered was really any school that had a two-year program only had it around for maybe four or five years and then closed it down because all they were doing was really allowing their students to take on additional class um, classes which would be a pretty heavy workload for a, a first year law student. Um, at Southwestern, it's completely different. They have revived it. It's on a very different schedule. We're not on semesters. We're basically what's on more close uh, to a quarter system. So we have four what we call periods throughout the year and then another summer period and then another four periods for the second year. and because you're taking a regular amount of classes, it's just on kind of an expedited time uh, timeline, it's incredibly manageable. I know two years can sound really daunting, but it's not. And so I started talking to a lot of scale students, asking them if they were still able to get in all of the extracurricular activities that they wanted, externships, honors programs, volunteering, and everyone had nothing but praises for me. Even when we weren't on the Southwestern campus, just one-on-one, -on -one, it was a wonderful community. And that's what really attracted me to Southwestern because if you had been able to sit in on our classes in the scale classroom, I mean, we have such a wonderful sense of camaraderie and that's what I really like. It's law school, so of course it's gonna be a little competitive, but at Southwestern, it's that supportive type of competition. I mean, in our classes, you know, if someone, oh no, I forgot my book in the car, the person sitting next to them would say, here, look over on mine. You know, someone else goes, oh no, my computer's about to die. Someone will unplug their own laptop and hand them the charger. Like that's the sense of community we have. Just to give you a little bit of a picture that I know you can't really experience while we're remote right now. But I knew that I didn't want to go to somewhere that was so cutthroat that students were kind of trying to climb on top of each other to, to get to their successes. At Southwestern, everyone really knows you by name. I mean, faculty, staff, I know the janitorial staff and the security folks and, and they know me and it's just a really wonderful place to be. Additionally, because of that sense of community while you're a student, we have such an amazing alumni base that comes back, attorneys, partners, judges, they all wanna give back to the community that gave them so much. And so that's kind of what brought me there and really reaffirmed that I wanted to be at Southwestern in the two-year program. 
Great, thank you, Nicole. Um, okay, we have a question from Andrew. How were you able to balance the demands of the two-year program plus all of the additional organizations and activities that you're involved in? And how many students are in your cohort? I'll answer the cohort part. Um, typically, there's about 45 to 55 in every scale entering class. Scale starts in June each year. Um, this past year, though, was a little bit larger and um, we started closer to 70 students. Okay, so go ahead, Nicole, if you wanna answer the question about balancing all of the different things that you're involved in. Thank you, Andrew, that's a great question. So it really comes down to time management and organization. I'm lucky in that I have a little bit of experience in that as a production stage manager. I was always coordinating cast, crew, band schedules. Um, so now that I'm in school, it really is just planning it out. In scale, you know, you're practically your entire first year, you have all of the same classes with your cohort, with one exception in, in the fourth quarter, you get to take an elective. Um, but you just have to be aware of all of the demands on your time. So I'm really a big fan of planning ahead. I have a written planner that is a weekly planner so I can cross everything out so you feel accomplished. But I put all of my schedule into a Google Calendar so that whether I'm at the computer or on the go somewhere, it's connected to my phone and in my pocket. Um, for example, for the volunteering events that I do, you know, some of them are once a month or once a week. So as soon as those dates are released, I put them on the calendar. That way I know in advance, okay, this week I've got small claims court clinic coming up. I'm gonna get extra homework done in advance so that on Thursday I'll have those four hours to be able to volunteer this month. So it really is just kind of looking and planning ahead. I would also say that, um, you know, as you all know, law school is a big commitment. So it was really helpful for me that I told the people in my life, close friends and family before I started school, look, this is an accelerated program. It's gotta be the priority for the next two years of my life. So cut me some slack. You may not see me at birthdays or every holiday, but once these two years are up, I'm gonna have a career that I love and we'll, I'll be there for everything you need. But when I'm studying for finals or midterms, I have to focus on that without any distractions. So being able to set those boundaries, you can also get in all of the experiences and opportunities that you really wanna do. It's all doable. Don't let it sound too daunting. Okay, uh, Hugo, you had a question. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh yeah, uh, hi Nicole, um, thanks Thank for doing this. Um, so my, my question is, um, uh, as an online like social distance uh, learner, um, what are your tips for uh, building relationships with uh, professors and also um, networking with, uh, ne with, with people for clinics and externships and stuff like that? Absolutely. So Southwestern is really great in that every morning around 8 or 9 a.m., we get an email that's called Today at Southwestern, and it'll have all of the op upcoming opportunities and events. A lot of those have guest speakers who are, you know, Southwestern alumni that are now attorneys or judges. Um, in of court meetings are a wonderful place. So I would definitely say that even though we're remote, there's a lot of chance to be able to get your networking in. So definitely go to those events. And then it's not just going to them, but if they give out their email address, send them a thank you note. Sometimes they'll say, hey, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. So you kind of start building your network that way. With professors, I mean, of course, you're going to want to volunteer in class when you can. Don't overdo it because there's a lot of students in class and everybody wants to be able to volunteer, but also just going to office hours, you know, have that one question ready and then maybe, you know, I, sitting around the Zoom room and listening to everyone else's questions. Sometimes once the questions run out, you get to just talk to each other, you know, on a personal level and kind of start building those relationships that way. So while it does feel, you know, a little strange to be remote sometimes, it's all still very possible. Cool. Thank you. Okay, um, Charisma was asking, what is the student to faculty ratio for the scale program? In other words, class size. Um, and would you say that professors office hours are flexible? 
Absolutely. So their office hours may not be flexible, but they are always available for additional appointments. You really just have to ask and then they'll find a time that works for both of you. Right now, it's nice that nobody has to commute. So there's a couple more hours in the day that are available. Um, and, you know, one professor to, to an entire cohort, my cohort is about 35 right now. And that's always worked out really well. When I need one-on-one -on -one time with a professor, I've always been able to get it. And what's really nice at Southwestern is I feel that we get a little more opportunity that you, than you might somewhere else. Because since we don't have some sort of undergrad program attached, you know that everyone on the campus is there just to help you succeed in law school. And for example, in scale, the first period the torts and contracts professors will actually look at your outline and give you feedback. And I've never heard of any other school giving you that kind of feedback. They don't just tell you, oh, send your practice exams to the TAs. They will look at them for you and give you some feedback so that you know how you can improve and get your writing better for the final exam. Thank you, okay. Um, Andrew's next question was, can you also describe a typical week, your daily hours or schedule? I'm also gonna ask Armand and Brittany, our traditional students who are our ambassadors, to put in the chat what their schedules look like just so students can see for comparison's sake. Sure, so um, scale is a little different in that our classes are not consistent the first year. It's not like every Monday I have this, every Wednesday I have that. It doesn't work that way. It sometimes changes on a daily basis, um, but we do get our entire class schedule for the entire year on day one. So that's nice. So you can keep track of what's going on. But because some of the scale professors are out there in the real world, you know, writing legislation, a part of ALI, um, which is the American Legal Institute that writes a lot of the restatements that you will find all about next year when you're in school. Um, sometimes they're at conferences and so they kind of rearrange us a little bit so that we still get to have them as a professor. So I'd say a typical day, um, I'm trying to think back to last year, we usually have two to three classes a day um, starting either at nine o'clock or 1045 then take a two hour lunch break. This year I get an hour and a half lunch break and then come back for one more class in the afternoon. Um, we have our evenings free and our early mornings free and it is Monday through Friday. The school organizations have a lot of different groups that meet during lunchtime. So you're still able to go to all of those events as you would with the other programs. Thank you. Um, okay, Jasmine would like to know what has been your experience with cold calls? <laughs> so my undergrad degrees were in English literature and theater. So I had never experienced cold calls in my life or anything that had to do with a curve. And they're really not that bad. It's not like you might see on tele, at least at Southwestern in scale. It's not like what you might see on TV or in movies where they're screaming at you and they want you to keep, they keep harping on you until you give them what they want. It's not like that at all. Everyone wants you to succeed, but they will kind of ask you questions to lead you down a path so that you're thinking for yourself to get there. Um, when you're in the hot seat, of course, everyone can get a little nervous. That's normal, but everyone knows how it goes with that. So I would say, as long as you're doing your homework, and taking decent notes. And I don't mean long, terrible treatises, just a couple of notes on each case. Though, so, you know, if you do the Bison Boot Camp, which I highly recommend, um, they'll give you some tips about how do I rack your case briefs. And as long as you're prepared, you'll be able to get through it. And then when the next case comes, they call on someone else. So you don't have to worry about it too much. It, it can sound a little, um, a little nerve wracking, but you get used to it after a while. And sometimes you start thinking, oh, I wish this was my case. I know the answer to all those questions, which is a really fun feeling. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Roland would like to know, can you describe the transition from being a full-time employee to a full-time law student? How might one prepare for this new financial dynamic? 
Yes, financially, everyone's different. So um, you certainly have to do your research and know what path you want to take for that. But regarding everything else, you know, I was pretty concerned that because I hadn't been a student for 10 years, I wasn't going to know how to study properly. I wasn't going to have the stamina to sit through class. I had a lot of concerns, but actually, I would say they weren't very well founded. Once I was in class and reading cases, I realized that because of my life experience background, I have a little bit of an understanding about the context that a lot of the cases are set in. And I was able to see, okay, the court opinion may not be talking about this external influence, but I understand it's there. You know, This case about a printing company that was having trouble in the 90s why wouldn't they be able to, you know, pay their franchise? Oh, well, the internet had just happened, you know? So no one's using paper anymore. They're emailing everything. There's little things like that. So I was concerned about that with the transition, but I would tell you, if you have any of those concerns, please don't. There's a whole lot you're gonna be able to pick up. And also law school is like no school anyone's ever done before. You're basically, relearning how to read the legal way. You're relearning how to write the legal way. So if your reading or your writing is not where you want it to be, you're gonna learn a new way anyways. So don't feel like you have to form some habit that you're just gonna have to break once you get into school. Uh, a bit of advice that I would definitely recommend that I wish someone had told me was no matter what your typing skills are before law school, take a free typing class online. Like, you know, just, just test your speed and your accuracy because final exams, if you can type a little faster, you might get a couple more issues in and you might get a couple more points on your test. So I definitely wish I had done that before law school, but the tr transition from working full time to doing scale wasn't, it wasn't too much of a difference because I've just been treating scale as if it is a full-time job, you know, 40 hours a week in class. You know, if you've got a day where you're in class for four hours and then you're doing four hours of homework, you know, that that's pretty standard. So I would say it's almost beneficial because you're already used to working those hours and having the stamina to keep going. Um, so I know it can sound odd because it's so new, but don't don't worry about it. You can do it. Great. So not to put Megan on the spot, but she did email us a question. Megan, did you want to ask Nicole your question? Sure. Um, that's very nice. Um, hi, thank you for this program. It's very nice. Um, so I was just wondering uh, how you dealt with the changes from an in-person class to an online class. And then I don't know if Southwestern has determined if they're going to start their programs online yet for 2021. Um, and since I know that scale starts earlier. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll answer that last part before okay. Nicole does the part pertaining to her. Um, it has not yet been determined. Um, you know, we, we have to follow everything that the County of Los Angeles mandates. At this current time, we are not allowed any type of opening. Um, and that's kind of been the case for a while. And it seems to be the case for the foreseeable future. Um, so we're just monitoring it really closely. Our best guess at this point, um, if we are allowed to move into some kind of you know, set up to allow students on campus, it would probably start with um, some limited access to the library, um, the Bullock's Wilshire Building as, as Nicole was referring to, um, that's where our library is. And then maybe, maybe some very small classes would be able to meet on campus. But at this point, we don't even know when that could be. Um, to give you a sense though, of how things played out this past nine months, um, we roughly determined or made the decision about two months prior to each of our respective programs. So scale in June was decided sometime in April-ish um, that it would be remote. And then the traditional programs that start in August, it was decided sometime in June, I wanna say maybe beginning of July. 
so, you know, a lot of that, of course, was, it was very new information and there was even less <laughs> that we knew now. Um, so my best guess is probably within a couple months of each of the programs starting, we'll make some kind of announcements, if not sooner. And then Nicole, if you want to go ahead and answer the rest of it. Sure. So when the school, right before the shelter in place order came down by the governor, the school decided to go to remote, go remote. And it was while everyone else's school was on spring break, but in scale, we don't do spring break. That's how we get it done in two years. So we were in the middle of classes. And what I will say is that the school canceled Monday and Tuesday classes so that the professors could all learn Zoom and how to teach remotely. And when we started classes up again on Wednesday, it was practically a seamless transition, at least for my classes. I was incredibly impressed by the way it was handled, and I still am, um, especially because, you know, not everyone has grown up with technology the way that some of the rest of us might have. And, you know, little things might happen here and there, but it's been pretty good. I really do believe that having classes online, while of course it's not the first choice, it's the best plan B we possibly could have had because you're still getting cold called like you normally would. You're still getting a lecture like you normally would. You still get PowerPoint presentations. If that professor uses PowerPoint, just like you normally would, you can still raise your hand. If you have a question, everything is the same. It's just that you're not in a physical space together. Um, there's really only one difference I would say, and that is that for the individual student, it is more difficult to focus sometimes, but that's really not anything that the school or the professor can do, like that's on me. So I just try to minimize my distractions, you know, turn off notifications so that my phone's not dinging every time I get an email or a text, you know, uh, not be on any other tabs open, just have my notes open, have speaker view on so that the professor looks bigger on my screen. So I feel a little more engaged and like I'm in the room, but everything else has been going really well. And I'm really thankful and glad that Southwestern chose to continue with all of the hard work that it is to do things remotely so that I can still get my degree in two years. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks for your question, Megan. Any other questions for Nicole before I ask some other questions? You can raise your Zoom hand or your proverbial real hand, <laughs> wave at me, Michelle, anything. I'll answer anything. <laughs> I, think we have one, I think we have a question in the chat. Are there any advantages? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, Andrew wanted to know, are there any advantages to remote? Absolutely. Seems like no commute is a great thing. No commute is huge. And I can attend way more meetings and events than I normally would be able to because that closet back there, I keep my blazer and a button up shirt in if I need to go to something that's a little more professional. It's really easy to get to things. Um, I'd also say that being remote, I personally have two monitors. So I've got my computer and then I've got a second monitor behind. So it's a lot easier for me to take notes that way. I've been finding that really beneficial. Um, I mean, of course, of course, we all would like to be in person for certain opportunities, but on the externship side, I have a lot of friends this summer and in scale, you do an externship in your last period, period eight. So all of my classmates are applying for those right now and they're able to go to opportunities in other states because everything's remote right now. So something that they usually, you know, may not be able to fly somewhere and then get lodging for eight weeks Right now they can because they can do it from the comfort of their home. So there, you know, it's, it's a nice little trade-off. I would say there are also advantages to the fact that um, some court systems are starting to do some remote um, hearings or, or things like that. And so we're actually getting to learn how to do all of that remotely so that when we graduate, we've got those digital trial advocacy skills Whereas some firms, you know, may not be as eager to move into the digital realm, we will already be ready. So it's more than just a marketable skill. Okay. Um, 
Oh, well, somebody sent me a question. How many units are needed? Um, 87 units is what we require to graduate from any of our JD programs. Um, Hugo, did you have another question? Um, yeah, uh, for Nicole. Um, so I have about like nine months in between now and um, the, the fall, uh, fall semester of 2021, which I uh, applied for. Um, what, what is um, one, uh, one, uh, one or more uh, books, either inside or outside uh, the uh, Southwest Western's curriculum that I, I could read um, between that time to kind of like uh, get myself ready for law school? Professor Ira Shafiroff has a book um, I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now. Seven, dead, seven deadly sins for one L students. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dean Gear. Um, so that, that was a good book. Honestly, I tried reading a few books and I found that it wasn't terribly necessary because you're gonna get everything that you need in class. I would say, you know, if you really wanna prepare for law school, take a little break. I know we can't really go on vacation right now, but before school starts, have at least one week, preferably two, where you're just kind of doing a whole lot of nothing because once you hit the ground running, it's gonna be go, go, go. Um, and burnout is real, so you need to be able to pace yourself uh, and know that you know stress is normal. We all get stressed. We all have breakdowns. That's just part of law school because of the manner of you know, a rigorous curriculum. But, you know, there's, there's a million books out there and a million things you could do. But I would say as long as you keep up with your studies while you're in classes, that's really all you're going to need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Martine would like to know what area of law are you studying and how did you come to choose this area? She's thinking, uh, she's asking because she's interested in entertainment, but also elder law as well. But obviously the two are not similar. That's great. And, you know, don't feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into what type of law you want to do right now. I can't tell you how many attorneys I've spoken with who were like, oh, when I started law school, I knew I was going to do this. And now I practice the exact opposite. So you get a lot of opportunities to experience new things. Just be open to them. Um, for example, one of the reasons why it took me a while to get to law school is I was not too keen on the idea of being in a courtroom, which is kind of unusual because I'm incredibly comfortable with public speaking, especially with my technical theater background. But the idea of you know having someone's life or finances in your hands, uh, being able to persuade a jury, showing deference to the court, thinking on your feet like that in a way that really mattered, I was a bit hesitant. And so one of the ways that I like to get over things like that is to dive head on into them. So in the SCALE program, the Trial Advocacy Honors Program team has tryouts in September. Um, the other honors programs are in the spring, but because it's a two year required commitment, they have to try us out a little earlier. So I went out for the competition. I made it through round one, had a whole lot of fun got called back for round two, made it through that. I was then a finalist and I ended up winning first place and joined the team. And I had such an incredible experience and really discovered my passion for trial advocacy, how much I loved it and being able to advocate for someone like that. So that's really what I'm pursuing. I'm also working towards earning a concentration in civil litigation and trial advocacy. Um, so you, I'm sure already know that Southwestern has a wonderful entertainment department. Um, the program is very robust. And you said elder law as well. There are courses for that. Keep that in mind. You probably won't take them the first year. Later on, you get to do your electives, but it's really easy to kind of tailor um, what courses you want to take to help you in whatever area of the law you want to pursue. I'm sorry, Dean Gear, you muted. Thank you. Um, Jocelyn wanted to know, has your public speaking improved during this journey? I know you said you were comfortable, but um, have you found that it's given you additional public speaking skills? Uh, definitely. And I would also say that, you know, legal public speaking skills are a little different. Uh, the type of deference you have to give to the court, 
the knowledge you need to have of, for example, the rules of evidence, how to go through a motion, how to speak to a witness or convince a jury. All of that is definitely improved through the trial ad and negotiations classes that I've been taking, as well as being a part of the honors program. Um, I, I just love it. I can't recommend it enough. Even if you don't want to go into trial advocacy, you know, if something comes your way, try it out. There's a lot of opportunities that you can just try for one day and see if you like it or, or if it really affirms your belief that, okay, I know for sure that I don't want to do that now. Um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any other questions? We have eight minutes left. I have a couple more, but I wanna make sure we answer any of the questions that the prospective students have. Anyone joining us tonight um, trying to contemplate scale versus part-time or scale versus the three-year full-time that maybe would like to talk a little bit about some of the similarities and differences? I know we have the 6 p.m evening program um, panel coming up, but if you wanted to be able to talk about it here, you're more than welcome. Considering all three, okay. Um, and no, Jeff, not Seven Deadly Sins of Legal Writing. Um, I'll send you a link to Professor Shafroff's book. It's Seven Deadly Sins of 1L something something. Any questions though? No, okay. I have more. Um, what are you most looking forward to after graduation, Nicole? I mean, obviously the bar, but <laughs> Definitely. On, the, on the other side of the bar exam, uh, what are you most looking forward to being able to be able to do or experience or put into action what you've learned? Uh, really practicing, being able to, as you just mentioned, put into practice what I've learned um, because I want to do litigation. I know that I'll be starting out doing a lot of research assignments, writing up memorandums to try and give background areas for probably niche problems that arise. And I'm really looking forward to that. In addition to being able to continue my volunteer work, I want to go into civil litigation but you know, most firms require pro bono hours for their firm anyways, and I'd love to be one of the attorneys who gets to do that. So I'd, I'd love to just continue that path. Okay. There's a question for Nicole, Brittany, and Arman. Why did you choose to come to Southwestern over other schools? Arman, you wanna take that one first? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Armand. I'm a 2L traditional day student at Southwestern. Um, my story goes back when I chose to go to law school. It was back in seventh grade when I was required to do a mock trial. <laughs> they assigned me to uh, be a, a criminal prosecuting attorney in seventh grade with the limited knowledge I had. But I fell in love with the idea of studying law. And this was a foreign concept to me because I'm a first generation student, first generation immigrant, first generation law student. And um, I was doing my research, uh, I live in Burbank, so I was doing my research schools nearby uh, to study law. And I came across Southwestern, I read more about uh, Southwestern's history and what it has to offer for first generation students and first generation immigrant students such as myself. And the very first time I took the LSAT was at Southwestern. So <laughs> once I saw Bullock's Wilshire, I immediately fell in love. Um, I chose Southwestern because of the unique atmosphere it had compared to other schools that I visited. Um, the professors were more comforting and welcoming. Um, the students were friendly. Uh, I mean, I remember walking on campus and just students I didn't even know, they would say hi and greet you. So I chose Southwestern because I felt at home and until this day, I feel like I have endless opportunities to study law at Southwestern. So that's why I chose it. Thanks, Armand. Brittany? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Brittany. I'm a 3 old traditional day student. Um, like Armand, I wanted to be a lawyer since I was in sixth grade um, because I was always arguing with everyone. And my parents were like, you're good at arguing. You can get paid for that. 
I was like, sign me up. Um, and so like Armand, I did mock trial um, all throughout high school. And I knew that from that experience, I wanted to be a trial lawyer. And then in college, I had the opportunity to work for the Orange County Public Defender's Office because I'm from Orange County. Um, and I fell in love with it. And I knew then that I wanted to be a public defender um, before even thinking about applying to law schools. And in applying to law schools, I knew I wanted to get out of Orange County um, because they're not very public defender friendly down there. Um, and so I wanted to come to LA County um, because there's, vast, there's a vast majority of more opportunities to work in criminal defense and help those who are incarcerated um, rather than being in Orange County. And so in looking at schools in LA, um, Southwestern has a really big public interest program. So if you're interested in working in like a nonprofit um, I have also worked for the Innocence Project and so like working for a nonprofit like that or other nonprofits that deal with like children's rights or elder rights. Um, Southwestern really has a lot of connections to the public interest community um, and you know echoing, echoing what Nicole and Armand have said like we really are a close knit community. The professors are like willing to put their life on the line for you um, so that you can understand concepts and every student just really wants you to succeed. Um, I've never been in a situation where you hear the horror stories of people ripping out pages and this and that. Like I've never been put in a situation where it's one student pinned against the other. Like everyone wants each other to succeed and do well and to have that support um, is really nice. And I also, was planning on commuting from Orange County. And it wasn't until I spoke to Dean Greer on my uh, campus tour that she's like, Brittany, you need to live in the residences on campus or you're That's gonna- pretty much how that went. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was Dean Greer who pushed me to move into the residences on campus. I've been here all three years. It's the best decision <laughs> that I've ever made. Um, so to really have, if you have the opportunity and, you know, I, it's a lot more extra loans, I get that, but, um, you know, to really have my own space to focus on my studies, um, has really allowed me to be successful. And I knew that I would have absolutely died if I was commuting from Orange County. So I owe my entire law school career to Dean Greer. So that's <laughs> my story. Happy to help. Uh, Nicole, did you want to answer that as well? I, I just want to echo what Brittany just said, because I lived on campus before the pandemic hit, and it is so worth it. So if you're thinking about it, highly recommend gorgeous housing. Also, some things to think about, you know, wherever you want to practice, that's probably where you want to go to school just because of the networking. If you want to be in L.A. or Orange County or somewhere in Southern California, Southwestern has an incredible reputation. We may not be known, you know, all across the country because we're a smaller school, but in Southern California, everyone knows us. And I can't tell you how many attorneys and partner attorneys and judges I've spoken to who talk about when they get their um, externs, they just love the Southwestern ones because we have a work ethic that's unmatched by any other school. One of my classmates this summer was um, working for a judge in the appellate court and other externs were from Harvard and Yale and she was telling me how nervous she was but she ended up blowing them all out of the water because the judge kept going to her. She would get twice the amount of assignments because her quality of work was so good. So just, just a few things to think about when you're choosing a school. Thank you. Well, we are actually out of time. I know the 45 minutes goes really fast. Um, I did see one other question that I'll just go ahead and answer. Um, yes, student housing will continue to become available. Um, even during the pandemic, we had students move in this year as well. So um, you can certainly follow up with me directly if you would like to talk about student housing further. Um, but thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Nicole, um, for spending this chunk of time um, and allowing people to learn a little bit more about you and your journey. Thank you to Armand and Brittany also for spending some time with us and giving a little bit of the traditional student perspective. And thank you to all of our prospective students for spending some time with us. Um, if you are going to be joining 
the evening program event, it is a different Zoom link. So you'll have to leave this one and go to the other link um, in order to catch that program. It starts in 15 minutes at six o'clock. So thank you to everybody. Um, visit our website for other events and um, office hours. Armand, Brittany, and our two other admissions ambassadors have office hours once a week. So you can find their, um, their link on our admissions calendar page. So it's www.swlaw.edu slash admissions cal. Okay, so good night, everyone, and be safe out there.